So you're probably watching this video because like me, you tend to enjoy the occasional video game. There's nothing wrong with that, right? I mean, video games are a great hobby. They allow us to exercise our minds by working on some interesting puzzles. They give us opportunities to feel emotions that we don't always necessarily feel or get to express. And sometimes they let us get our rage out by just killing everyone in sight. I guess better to do that in a video game than, you know, have those tendencies in real life. But have you ever been talking to your other friends that also play video games and you tell them something like, hey guys, I spent 30 hours playing Final Fantasy VII Remake this weekend and I beat it. And you get that, that look of disapproval that's like, mm, I'm gonna judge you a little bit because that might've done something that's maybe socially unacceptable. Sometimes gamers become a little over infatuated with video games and we tend to maybe go a little overboard in our obsession with certain video games or just the entire industry of video games as well. So today we're here to talk about seven signs that you may love a video game or just video games in general, maybe a little too much, or maybe just the right amount. You don't need that negativity in your life, at least not from me. Now, if you do enjoy video games, make sure to hit the like button on this video and subscribe and the notification bell so you get notifications for new videos like this, which will be about video games. Also, comment down below, are there any video games that you like maybe just a little too much? Let us know what that game is. If you don't have any video games or really just anything to say, put your favorite emoji down in the comments. Your engagement really helps out the channel with the YouTube algorithm. All right, with that harmless self-promotion aside, let's go ahead and get on with the video. So the first sign that you may like a video game just a little too much is that your internet search algorithms are suggesting content to you about this video game. Now there's good news here is that we're still in the early stages of if you love a video game too much. There's a lot of plausible deniability here as to why your internet may be suggesting to you videos about a particular game. I mean, it could be as simple as the AI has become self-aware and just now knows your entire life. I mean, we've all been in that situation, right? Where you've never watched a game of cricket or even know the rules of cricket in your life. And then one day you were talking in person to one of your friends and you said, hey, there's this cricket in my living room and it's making a really annoying sound. And then later that day, you started getting Amazon suggestions for cricket bats, wickets, and maybe even a vacation suggestion to St. John's Wood, London. AI has become dangerously self-aware by listening to you and knowing some of the things that you're at least like maybe talking about, but it's also very likely that you've probably been searching for this game a little bit, let's be honest. Now that doesn't mean you love the game too much. It may be a game that you're struggling with and you're searching, you know, videos on how to get better at the game or optimal builds for a specific game. But even then, just doing that means you might love the game just a little more than your casual gamer who has tried the game. For example, I have never Googled how to get good at Elden Ring because it's something that I'm pretty sure I'm just never going to be able to do. So if you have at least gone out of your way to Google how to get good at Elden Ring or Elden Ring builds, you clearly already love the game just a little bit more than me. You may have also escalated to the level of devotion where you're searching up fan fiction for this particular game. Again, you have plausible deniability. Don't worry, we're not accusing you of anything. But if your internet search algorithm is suggesting you content about this video game, you may be in the first stage of liking a game just a little too much. Now, if I were to ask you for a particular video game that you happen to enjoy, how many save games do you have for that game? And then I were to follow that up with how many items of food do you have in your residence? If your answer for number of saves is higher than your answer for amount of food, I think we have established that there is at least a chance that you like that game just a little too much. Now again, we're still in the land of plausible deniability. You may be like me and play the game of XCOM or RimWorld wrong and you save scum because you don't want your people to die and you want to reload. Again, maybe I care about those people just a little too much. You may also be playing a game like Skyrim or Knights of the Old Republic that have a ton of bugs to where you need to be able to revert to an old save in case something goes awry. I was trying to record a YouTube short and some members of the companions apparently are bugged into thinking they're guards and trying to arrest me. And so yeah, those extra saves certainly came in clutch. But I feel like the casual gamer for that same game probably has like five saves over the course of the entire game. This may go into just talking about what kind of a gamer you are and that you're, you're a cautious, you're a safe gamer. It doesn't necessarily say that you love this particular game too much. Maybe it says that you love games too much or you're just a cautious person. But in general, if you've run out of digits when you're trying to count the number of saved games you have for a game, 
I think we're starting to run out of plausible deniability and you may start to like that game just slightly too much. All right, so for entry number three, I think we are just about to leave the land of plausible deniability. This is your last stage before you have to accept that you at least like a game a little too much. And that is going to be that you have played the entire game more than once. Now, I'm not saying like you played Pokemon Red when you were a kid and now you're like 35 and you want to reclaim your youth so you break out your old Game Boy Color and you start playing some Pokemon. No. I mean, like, you finish a game and you're like, let's go again, let's go again, and you hit new game immediately. Or you're like me and you every year have to put in at least 50 hours into Skyrim on a yearly basis because you're just obsessed with the game. Again, there is that level of plausible deniability because you may be going back to visit a game of yesteryear. You may also be one of those people that plays from software games that believes that you haven't actually even beaten the game until you've beaten the game on New Game Plus or New Game Plus 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 Plus. However, I'm gonna say if you've beaten a from software game on New Game Plus, you at least certainly love the game a lot more than me. But if you ever find yourself in the situation where you finish a game entirely and you think, man, I need to go and start another playthrough of that same game, if you're not accepting it yet, I think it's time to finally accept you might like that game a little too much. Or like I said, just the right amount. Now for entry number four, I think it has now become abundantly clear that you really like a game whenever you have achieved the platinum trophy for that game. Now, and I don't just mean any platinum trophy. I'm not talking about the likes of My Name is Mayo or The Chick C. I'm talking about games that have a platinum that require multiple playthroughs, that require you to go and hunt down all of the Easter eggs, there may be the smallest amount of plausible deniability in that you just go for the platinum on every single game because you're a trophy hunter. In which case I revert back to, you may not love this particular game too much, but maybe games just a little too much in general. I personally only go for platinum trophies if either A, the game is really easy to get the platinum trophy in, or B, I really, really love the game. For example, on Undertale, I was in fact willing to donate all of my money to the dog shrine and spend like an hour donating money just to get that platinum trophy. I also loved Skyrim so much that I was willing to put in like 120 hours into Skyrim just to get the platinum. I acknowledge that those are two games that I absolutely love and maybe a little too much. But there's a fine line, like whenever I finished playing Final Fantasy VII Remake, I noticed that to get the platinum trophy, you have to unlock all nine dresses for Cloud Strife. Now, if you're not aware, to unlock all the dresses, those dresses that you get are based on the dialogue choices you make throughout the chapter. So if you want to get all nine dresses, you are going to have to play the chapter nine times. Sorry, I love you Final Fantasy Remake, but not that much. That's a platinum I'm probably not going to be getting. But if you did get that platinum for Final Fantasy VII Remake or just any platinum like that in general, then I think it's clear you love that game or at least like it more than the average user. Now for entry number five, if it's not clear yet to you that you like this game too much, it has become abundantly clear to everyone else that you do because entry number five is where people come to you for help on that video game. For some people, I by no means claim to be an expert, but for some people, I am that person for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. I have multiple friends that ask me to remod their accounts. They ask me questions on what characters they should farm for the game. They ask me for help on strategy in certain battles. And I, in turn, have people that I go to for the game as well. And I feel like most people have that game that at some point they were so good at that their friends were calling them up. You know, back in the days before the internet, we just had guides up for everything. Like on Metal Gear Solid, if you didn't know that Meryl's phone number was on the back of the box, and I mean the back of the literal video game box, and if you knew that, but none of your friends did, you know that your friends were calling you, asking you, how do I find it? Where is this box in the game? And then you get to be all smug and smirk and tell them, actually, I know the secret. It's not in the game. You have to have your physical game box. If you bought the game used from like a GameStop or somewhere, might be in trouble. So if you're showing people how to do aerials in Rocket League, or giving advice on strategies in Rainbow Six Siege or Overwatch or, or Counter-Strike Global Offensive, then you definitely love that game. I don't know if it's too much or not. Again, I don't need to be putting any sort of negativity into your life, but everyone else is at least aware that you're good at the game and you really like that game. 
Next, we move on to entry number six, which is a step above entry number five, which is at entry number five, right? People were coming to you asking for help and you were being that sage and giving your sage wisdom to everyone else. But for entry number six, you are no longer giving sage advice to everyone coming to you. You are actively creating content on the internet for your game for other people. Why are you looking at me? Don't don't look at me. I don't love games that much. Yeah, I know that's that's entirely why I even created this YouTube channel in the, in the first place was because I wanted to help other people with games and help them succeed. Means that yeah, maybe I did love the games that I've made content for just a little too much. And it doesn't have to be video content on YouTube if you've gone and made a made a guide in a Word document and posted it onto a Steam forum. If you've made visuals for your Galaxy of Heroes guild or Disney Sorcerer's Arena or insert other mobile game and posted them for your guild to use in in-game events. If you have a job training people on how to play a specific game, I know there's a guy in my Discord who is a professional Rocket League player and trains people how to play Rocket League. He makes video content for it, he writes articles about it, and he, for a small price, does training sessions with people who look him up. This is the sign that not only do you love your game a fair amount, but you're also really good at it. So my hat is off to you. All right, so finally for entry number seven, we've hit the point where we, we're kind of stepping in between the boundary of you're really good at a game and you're respected for the game to where you might love the game just a little too much and you might start to get judged by other people for how much you love this game. And that is that you take time off of work or school to play this game. If whenever a new expansion pack comes out for Final Fantasy XIV and you have to call in sick because you need to play that new expansion as soon as it drops, or maybe the newest Path of Exile content has dropped and you need to play it right now. And since it dropped on a weekday, gosh darn it, you, you gotta call in because you've got to play that game. I personally had experience with this and it's a very unfortunate experience. I don't think I've done it since. But you guys may remember a very hyped MMO called Fallout 76. Oof, I'm already shuddering just thinking about this experience. But yes, I did take off. I think it was the Friday, it was in November, that Fallout 76 came out because I was just going to play Fallout 76 all day long, all weekend. I was going to dedicate that weekend to Fallout 76. And if you're not laughing yet, you should know my pain when the game just like wouldn't run, was crashing, was dropping frames. It was a terrible, terrible experience, and I almost wished that I was at work instead of trying to play that game. But it was okay because I just launched Fallout 4 and played that instead and had a great time. But if you've ever found yourself in that situation where you take time off of work, you call in a sickie, or you're skipping classes in college because you need to play your video game of choice, and I will say congratulations, I think you've moved up to that level of dedication where you like your game just a little too much. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you today. Let me know down in the comments. Do you have any stories of when you realize that you love a game a little too much? Have you ever called in sick to play a video game before? Let me know that story down in the comments. If you don't have any stories, just throw your favorite emoji down in the comments. Again, your engagement really helps out this channel. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you get notifications for any new videos, live streams and shorts. And we will talk to you guys in a later video. Have a great day.